How's it going people? My name is Prue Raptor and if you're joining in or checking in for the very first time for all the latest gaming trends and all the gaming videos for the PS4 and the PS5 make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. That being said, let's get into the game. Alright guys, welcome back to the letter. Uh, so in the last episode we left off with where Marianne and Mrs. Wright were talking or having a heated discussion with one another. So we're gonna see where this game leads to and what horrific adventures await us. That being said, Let's jump into it. I felt giddy, but the feeling dies down afterwards as I sober up. Oh well, back to work. Soon enough, I find myself drawn to the kitchen where the white butler has returned to. If you guys remember, this cellar is, if you see the hatch right here, I don't know if my uh, mouse pointer shows it, but the hatch right opposite to the table uh, counter over here is where I got the most spooked out of when when the ghost actually jumped out of the cellar it was it was horrific my heart just jumped out of out with the ghost itself so I, I'm, I'm not really happy about seeing this place then again i'm not even happy about seeing the whole mansion itself um so uh, okay he's already claimed the space and telling movers to back off and none dares to question his proclamation uh, proclamation either my kitchen no kinder allowed Little men running around with knives, especially. Well, ne never knew this side of uh, the butler. The butler is actually really cool, I think. We do not want any accidents to happen now, do we? Good? Good. Good. It, it, is, that, is that like good in a uh, British, ac British accent or something? I, I live in England, but I don't have any accent, so... I don't know. It's just one of those things, guys. I mean, it's a knife building German standing there. I don't think anyone would, anybody will be insane enough to refuse his request. I hope I meet the age restriction, or at least the height restriction, because I'm asking to be let in here. Mm-hmm. You are allowed inside, McCulloch. McCulloch. But not the literal ones. McCulloch. A shake of my head and a roll of my eyes is all I give him. It's not like I'm going to be in each sort of trouble to him. I just need to look around, get my bearings. The breakfast had been distraction enough. I don't even want to think about what we just talked about. Oh yeah, guys, uh, that was a heated dis uh, discussion between Mrs. Wright and Marianne. If you guys want, you, got, you guys have to check out the previous episode. I just need to get my head straight and get back to work. The movers work efficiently even when they are left alone, and they do quick work of their responsibilities. The head foreman come standing in the doorway to consult me on this and that, and I have to go ha go out and help him now and then. But I pretty much have everything up to standards. They skip lunch entirely and not even realizing what they do so. Nevertheless, all is well as the butler gets to heating up the leftover bubbles and squeak from the bre breakfast and makes a generous bat batch of fish and chips for them. Most likely, simple in comparison to what he serves to the rights, but well done nonetheless. That smells good. Want to wrap up some for me to go? Okay, I, I'll take all the food I can get. I'm, I'm just here for the food. It's an idle observation more than anything, my thoughts as they are preoccupying me. If there are any left. Uh, what do you mean? Come on, I asked first. One can't go wrong with fish and chips. Everyone loves them. Even my husband. And he's American. Oh. Okay, okay, we get, we're getting to know more about the butler. Alright, alright. I really do hate getting up so close and personal with my clients. It's a distraction. It is obvious to me that I've gotten my priorities all wrong and when I can't help but think about what I heard, what I learned about the right couple. These things have a way of creeping up on a person, thoughts, ideas, whether they are perfect, uh, whether they are fact or fiction. They creep up faster, crawl and writhe in a way that twists. I hear giggling, delighted, delighted and mocking. They creep up and the sensation of finger ghosting behind, briefly on my arm causes me to freeze and hiss. Is it the ghost lady? I don't think so. Then again, I, I, I don't know what to ex expect from the game. It, it might be anything. This game hasn't failed to surprise me even though I've been playing it for the past two years. I have expect her... I, I half expect her to be there. Whoa, no need to scream bloody murder. Jesus Christ, that scared shit out of me too. He just popped like... You guys saw that, right? He just... He didn't even pop with his proper character. He popped in like a shadow and then his character came into vision. There's something wrong with Wright, Mr. Whiskey. It's just me. Quiet down before you break glass. Are you calling me the fat lady? How dare you? But it's just Whiskey. Don't do that again. Ever. Damn, she's mean. 
I don't like being scared. I don't e believe in the likes of spooks. Being startled is not on top of the list of things Marianne liked. Lucky for him, I have nothing within reach, or he would have gotten on friendly terms with something like a rolling pin. What was with that reaction? Were you really scared? Has Johans been telling you ghost stories? He just loves to scare people. He was trying to put me fish and chips, that's all I know. You ruined it, Mrs. Mr. Whiskey. Isn't that right, Brother Gurriam? Brother Graham. The butler's expression is unreadable. I hardly see any emotion on his face to begin with since I started working for the rights, aside from vague amusement. There must have been something there though, judging from Mr. Wright's own content look. The expression of Mr. Wright's face is almost cruel. But neither of them spoke even as Johannes leaves the room to serve the workers their late lunch. Ooh, badass exit. So, now that we're alone, Marianne, what are you so jumpy for? Stop calling my name, it's creepy. I was just thinking about all the urban legends the movers have been telling me about this place. I don't like it. Don't tell me you believe in that tosh. They're nothing but tales made up to scare children. Tosh. Timmy, Billy, don't you dare go up to that big mansion and get in trouble there. The ghosts are going to get you. <sighs> He's gonna die first, guys. That's a boring way to look at it, but that's usually what it is anyway, no? Like I said, I was just thinking. Okay. It would be a relief actually if those rumors of this place being haunted is true. That just means I'm not going bonkers. Hearing let alone seeing a dead person isn't exactly the symptoms of a healthy mind. Sure, it means that there would be such, such things like such ghouls and goblins, but at least I'd be sane. On the other hand, there would actually be a dead girl walking around. If you could excuse the inane question, Mr. Wright. You haven't noticed anything weird here? No, because it's already weird. <laughs> a simple enough question on the surface, yet I notice the man stiffen as the question leaves my mouth. I wouldn't have noticed it if I wasn't watching his reaction intently, but his eyes. I see something dangerous. It depends on your definition of the word weird. <coughs> Are we still on the topic of this place being haunted? Mm-hmm. We're definitely on that same topic as I'm speaking of right now. Because no, things have not started to fly around and we have yet to require an exorcism. I don't think my head would like to do the whole 180 degree turn thing. Mm-hmm. It would, it will be, soon enough. Well, maybe that, but no strange people? Aside from my usually weird butler and all the weird men traipsing around touching my things? No, not really. Really? Really? Okay. We, we, we believe you, right guys? We believe you. Why do you ask? Have you noticed anyone strange while you were here? Because you must report it to Johans and he'll have security handle it. Sure. But these reports better not be about ghosts and things that go bump in the night. I don't want to waste manpower on the boogeyman or senseless witch hunts. Okay. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Wright. But no, it's nothing like that. Mm-hmm. If I told you, you would go insane. I guess the mansion is just strange for me. It's a unique project. Mm-hmm. It, it definitely is, with all the ghosts and everything right behind the cellar. No strange men or women looking about, Ben? A dead teenager would technically qualify as strange. But yeah, the whole I see dead people thing isn't going to o go over well. Not that I know of, but I'll inform your hands immediately if something comes up. Mm -hmm. That I will do, because he's cool. You're a douchebag. I'm serious, Mint. You see anything. Anyone suspicious and you report it immediately. Why being serious all of a sudden, hmm? I think that goes without saying. The concern he ha he have on the talk of security is gone, quickly gone. His arrogant smug smirk returns. If a bit subdued. Whatever swarmy smarky remarks swarmy remark, smarky remark or innuendo he have to be ready never comes though. As voices from the dining hall ring out. Sorry, I can't hear that. that that's Zachary. That's Zachary. Oh, oh, so these are the events that happened before. Uh, before, yeah, before. So we actually went through this episode. So. When we're talking to uh, Zachary with Mrs. White, 
this event already took place. Okay, okay, so this is how the characters entwine now, of most things. That would be the magazine photographer, I presume. As always, Mrs. Wright talks in such a kind and cheery fashion, no matter who she's talking with. And it certainly puts people at ease around her. It sounds like it's working on the photographer, too. Hearing them, though, seems to put Mr. Wright in such a sour mood. At least, if his small cowl is any to go by. Uh, is he jealous? Um... Uh, try to lighten the mood. I'm just gonna try to lighten the mood because I don't like him very much. But hey, that's just what the what the game is giving me. But try to lighten the mood. Well, let me save this actually. So if I, if we want, we can go back and choose a different option to see if we can get different endings. So I'm just gonna save this right here. There you go. All right. Try to lighten You're the mood. You're not gonna go out there and join Mrs. Wright. You're starting to look strange. Mm. If you want your picture taken so badly. I'm sure the photographer would oblige. You def Zachary would definitely would. Uh, yeah, I, I, I couldn't say. I did photography. I, I studied photography, but I couldn't say if that's harder or easier. I don't know what you guys think. We need to get you away from the butler. You're starting to sound like him. Someone's jealous. No, I'm not joining Hana for an interior design magazine photo. What am I? A piece of furniture? That you might very well be, will be, if you meet the ghost. Forever stuck there like a statue. Look, did a lot of you have anything else crucial to do today? Marianne. Hmm. There are still some little things to do. It isn't the end of the day yet. Yes, yes, but you're paid hourly, aren't you? Per day? Pretty. Really, I don't care. Even the others can just take off for the day. What? Why? Why is he dismissing us so early? All of a sudden. Soon after I mentioned about the ghost and haunting of the mansion. Something ticked, guys. Something ticked. I don't like it. Is this about the possibly is possible security threat? Did my question get him all wary and paranoid that he would just send the workers and I away? I realize that the threats are of actual concern to these rich and powerful people. I imagine whether anyone wants to or not. They get a few enemies here and there. But I'm sure that the foreman and his workers can be trusted and are not his threat. Well, at least I trust the people I'm working with. Hmm. I understand if he doesn't. He doesn't know them from a can of paint. Still, won't it be safer if there are people around who can watch your back? You're the boss. Okay, as as long as I getting I'm getting paid and I get that fish and chips from the butler. My being paid by the day aside, I will be held responsible for any significant delay caused by your decisions. I'll try to get around that of course, but I'll just remind you of the fact. Okay. Whatever, take forever with the house. I don't give a bloody damn. Are you sure? Don't you worry, you're still getting your money. Just sort off. Go crawl around a pub and find yourself a good lay. Really? Oh wow, wow. Wow, he's saying that now, guys. He, he's saying that when. Wow, I, I'm re, I'm mad. I'm I'm mad. I'm mad. You guys, you guys gotta watch the previous episodes, guys, if you know what I'm talking about and why I'm mad. Paranoid or aggravated as he might be, this conversation certainly did not have to warrant that sort of remark. Maybe I will. She's right to be angry. Walking out of the kitchen, I just accept the fact that whatever he says will go f while under his roof. Oh, there he is. Sacre. Mrs. Wright and the photographer are still too far away, too far busy in conversation to notice me, even as I make my way through the dining hall. Besides, I didn't want to ruin their fun. Well, it wasn't really a big thing. Mm -hmm. People didn't like Blue Fancy very much. Blue Fancy. People don't like a film about colors. Oh, yeah. Something else happens between Zachary and Hannah, guys. You guys gotta watch the previous episodes. I can't stress it enough. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibby a lot more. Going to the foyer has made has me stumble upon the family butler once more, who raises a brow at my presence. And where are you off to in a hurry, Miss McCulloch? McCulloch. The foreman is looking for you. But I got a day off, and where are my fish and chips, butler? The Bratwurst wants us off the clock. He's dismissing us early because of... Oh, I don't know. She's, she's really mad. He just wants us out of here. I'll go and call a cab for you then. It would be for the best that you leave when he asks you to. Yep, because he's, he's mad. 
No, he he's insane. He's insanely mad. Like the insane, just the psychopathic kind. My ride back to the city doesn't take too long to get here. One that has somehow bothered me greatly, more than my expression over whiskey and this project, or wanting all of it of it to stop. There has been no Lorian whispering over my ears today. Worse, worse, I find myself searching for it, searching for her. What was that? Dumb. I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't know how to pronounce that. Loose ends. Fucking. I can't swear. Fudging bloody loose ends everywhere. I thought I've already moved past this years ago. And it does nothing to help me curb my frustration. If anything, it only ensures that I want a stiff drink. And where else to go to drink? Tuesdays are for karaoke and Wednesdays, improv. Usually, it's just for guys who did hilarious games. The one with Irish drinking songs are always a crowd favorite. It is Jack Septica here. Though I love a good laugh, stand up comedy isn't my thing. And without Kem or Haruna or any other distractions, I end up drinking a lot more this time. And where there's several bottles of beer in me, I get really, really embarrassing. Hey! G! Psst! G! Come over here! She's fucking drunk, guys. I swear. <laughs> I'm sorry. I need you for something. It's a good thing that the bartender is a nice fellow. It's I'd probably been kicked out of other places by now or worse. If push comes to shove, all he would do is give me an easy smile and shake off his head, even when he's attending to other customers. Just like now. Give me a moment, will ya? I gotta go check on her. Oh yeah. Ooh. He's some Asian guy. He didn't sound Asian though. And I'm pretty sure I've seen him before a couple of times. Although he never talks anyone else except G. The girls used to be all over him too, but he always turned them away. I'll be here. You go do that before she falls over. Oh! It's him! I, f I forgot his name! I forgot his name, I know him! Is he the bartender? Alright, alright. What is it? Oh wait, no! Oh, so he was talking to the uh, guy who I knew before, but I forgot his name now. And this is the Asian bartender. Wait, wait, wait. No, he was talking to the Asian bar Asian guy who was sitting there, but he's not Asian. I don't know what I'm talking about at this point, but let's go with the flow. <laughs> Do you need someone to help you get home? He sounds Australian though. Bartender, pour the wine. Okay then. Oh, I think that's enough alcohol for you, little missy. I'm cutting you off. Okay. A wine comes from the back of my throat as he pulls my ball away. I hope I have no hope of getting them back once they've been behind the counter. Even in my drunken mind, I don't dare drop the hope, dare hop over it for him. Because what little sense I have left now, I have left now. I'd sooner take a floor dive than succeed in a rustling a bottle from a sober man. How did I re read that pro properly? Something's wrong with me today. But that doesn't stop me from trying to reach out with my arms like a stupid idiot anyway. He smiles and shakes his head, just like I know he would, before going back to the other guy. Right now, where were we? How you holding up, boy? Uh, just... With no drink and no one to really chat with, I would have gone home or gone to sleep on the bar right there and then. But I'm not ready to stand up and try to track back home just yet. Same old, same old. I'm still on the Luxborn firm case. Mm -hmm. Those blokes they talk about being in dark suits, whisking people into the night or some shit and all that. Didn't the media call it some ridiculous name in the morning news? What? Did I miss something? What is it this time? Wait, don't answer that. They've called it a lot of things. As long as people don't start running around claiming they're the Illuminati. Is the Illuminati behind this? Alright guys, that's it all. That's for the that's all for the video. I'm going. Bye! I'm kidding, I'm here. So, what have you got for me this time, G? Anything good? Slow down there. You haven't even told me what sort of deal and dosh we got. Who are you looking into this time? The talk would have interested me, would have kept my attention if I gave a damn. But in my current state, I can barely give two fucks about... There, there I go again! About the things going on around me. All these words are just buzzing, barely surfacing from the sea of sound that is the pub. Christian channel, guys. And it would have stayed that way, perhaps even drowned if I didn't hear his name. Luke Wright. You know the guy. Oh. And don't pretend like you don't, G. It takes a special kind of ignorant not to know who he is. That smug blonde that I was throwing around his money. He was just here a few days ago, as a matter of fact. 
I mean whiskey. Great tipper. If you think you're just dumping a water cash on the counter after having too much whiskey, cancer's tipping. Why are you asking? He dirty. Oh, he dirty. He is really dirty. You have no idea, G. He's probably the worst sort you can imagine. Look, fudging right, fudging whiskey. Even without him around, I'm still hearing about the guy. What the absolute fudge? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I had to censor this thing out. Despite this, I find myself getting up and sauntering around to join them before I pipe up. Is this smart talk about look fucking right? I'm hearing it. Excuse me. I'm trying to set up a good example here. Private conversation here, lady. There's only amusement on G's face. The Asian guy, he starts to look ticked off as hell. Don't worry, Holmes, she's clean. And she might be able to help you with your uh, predicament. predicament. Of course. A drunk's just stumbled through here with what I need. Get real, G. No offense, lady, but you're smashed. Whoa, 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 back up a little, dude. <laughs> I know, right? Nothing beats being drunk after a hard day's work. Especially when you're working for Mr. Luke Wright. Thank God she didn't... Alright. So, she works for the guy? Doesn't that make her, I don't know, suspect? Hey, hey, stop suspecting me on suspecting basis. Come on. See, you have a little faith in me, why don't ya? I don't have much and you might as well have something to go off. You're the one who was so desperate to come run into me for business. Mm-hmm. Yoo-hoo, still right here, fellas. <laughs> Five feet eleven. Can't miss me. <laughs> Whoa, all right, or like over here. What? Well, getting a little bit too personal here. What's it that mad look? You want to dance, boy? You don't look like you can bust a groove. Maybe a leg, but with that fancy coat of yours. All right then. To add insult to injury, I move directly behind him and use the top of his head as an armrest. But when he shakes me off, I plop into the seat right next to him. Don't try me. You can hardly stay on your feet. We don't want to ruin your fancy coat, do we? Whoa, whoa. We're talking about coats here? I mean, I'm just wearing a shirt, which is not even properly branded. I mean, all right. Ah, oh, children, the both of you. But you're still standing after all that, are you? <laughs> Matt, you see this giantess? She's a legendary regular here. Been drinking like this no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I know what happened last time she was here. I'm a bit jealous. Can't do that anymore or my liver will give out on me. Good with the mic too. Mm -hmm. Don't see you much recently, but I guess you're always busy, aren't you? You're some fancy designer of something, if I remember correctly. Get your facts right. Wait, I know you. You were at the open house for the mansion. Yeah. That's right, Marianne McCall. I'm a famous interior designer extraordinaire. I was pronouncing. I was pronouncing. I'm gonna ignore that. I was pronouncing her last name right all along, Marianne McCall. Anyway, you guys were talking about that weenie look right, right? Mm -hmm, of, of which I had done nothing with or something can't really talk about it I don't even know if I can trust you even if G said you're clean but anything would be of help well I don't gossip about my clients if that's all there is to this mm -hmm. you wanted to gossip about him a few minutes ago Marianne I'm drunk what do you expect I have shot to memory loss of drum drunk come on and that was the beer talking not Marianne. That's exactly what I said. You won't mind if we ask the beer a few questions then? Maybe. Depends on who's asking and what they're asking. How dare that sleazy wanker treat me like I'm a piece of furniture? I'm trying to keep this family friendly over here. God damn it, Marianne. And by a wanker, you mean Luke Wright. You don't have to repeat that. Oh my god, I'm done. Oh, yeah. Yes, Luke Wright. I just said that. He's called What the f what? what the fuck? Completely different from his pretty wife. And Annie? Han? Um, Hannah? Anna? What's going on? I wouldn't be surprised if he's doing something dirty behind her back. Even bought him a mansion. 
Lucky bastard. Okay, okay, this is getting too much. All right, guys. I'll have to stop the episode here because I'm all out of time for this episode. But if you guys want to know what happens next, make sure to stay tuned. That being said, stay safe. Peace. Legends never die when the world is calling you. Can you hear them screaming out your name?